We are going to demonstrate the effect of surface area on reaction rate. To do so, we are going to use the reaction of calcium carbonate with hydrochloric acid. In the process, carbon dioxide gas is produced. Here we have some calcium carbonate in each of these two reaction test tubes. The mass of calcium carbonate used in the two cases is the same, but they differ in their surface area because in the one on the left we have granular calcium carbonate which has a high surface area and on the right we have little stones of calcium carbonate with a lower surface area. Shortly we will add some hydrochloric acid to each of the, the test tubes and that will cause this reaction given below forming carbon dioxide gas. This carbon dioxide gas will move, will, it will rise and then it will travel along this delivery tube in each case and then here you see that we have an inverted test tube filled with water and the gas is going to bubble up displacing the water downwards. We call this the downward displacement of water and we will, we will compare how much gas gathers in each case in a certain time. So we now add hydrochloric acid to each of them. We must make sure we add it simultaneously. And we add the same quantity of hydrochloric acid and the same concentration. We put on a test tube stopper. Notice the bubbles formed. And well we can immediately see that over here, in the case of the granular calcium carbonate, there are more bubbles produced per time, meaning there's a higher reaction rate. So we could either use the volume of gas gathered in a certain time as our indicator of reaction rate, or we could use the time taken for a certain volume of gas to be collected as our indicator of reaction rate. We can see that we've almost filled the test tube in the case of the granular calcium carbonate, whereas the test tube is only about a third full um, in the case of the small stones.